and welcome back to another week of meals. I am starting off this week with a very simple dish that my mom used to make while we were growing up. It's basically a corned beef kind of omelet. It's really more reminiscent of like a Spanish tortilla. Uh, it's basically corned beef and onions and egg. Uh, so real, real easy here, as I usually like to do at the beginning of the week. I'm starting off by dicing up some uh, onion here, and uh, I'm going to set that aside and then continue with the rest of the recipe once this is done. This is the corned beef that I'm going to be using. I picked it up at the Filipino store. This particular brand is kind of pricey, but I thought I would splurge. I hadn't had this in a really long time. This one's imported from Australia, but you use whatever you have to pick up at the grocery store, um, whatever your favorite brand is. In the meantime, I'm going to saute the onions that I had just diced up. Uh, this is uh, in some olive oil here. And then once they get to kind of translucent, I'm going to create a little space in the middle and I'm going to dump all of that corned beef right in the center. I'm just going to let that hang out in the middle uh, so that all of those solidified fatty bits <laughs> sort of dissolve and heat up and then I'm going to mix everything together. depending on the corned beef that you use, uh, you're going to get some residual fat or just some fat that's been rendered out of that corned beef. It kind of um, turned me off a bit. There's quite a bit in this, so I just drained the fat, uh, scooped all the meat out, left the, the fat in the pan, and then I'm going to discard that and then return the corned beef to the pan so I can continue making the uh, tortilla or omelet. I'm not exactly sure what to call this, but here we go. I'm returning it back to the pan, and then I'm going to stir that around to sort of dry it out a bit. There is some fat in there, but there also is still a little bit of moisture from the onions. So I'm just going to spread it around, heat it up until it gets a little bit more crispy or drier. Uh, so. Here it is here. You can see as I'm scraping the bottom, you don't want it to burn necessarily, and this isn't burnt. It tastes just fine, but I guess super caramelized is what I'm going for. Now on to adding the eggs. If you follow me on Instagram, I had posted in one of my stories this little trick of using an empty jar and just shaking that up. Now, my elbow, I don't know what happened to my elbow, but I was having major, major elbow pain. So this didn't get, quote unquote, scrambled as much as it normally would. But um, you can see here the egg white hasn't been completely mixed through and there was like a whole egg yolk my arm just like it hurt really really bad so I went ahead and just scrambled it in the pan and just mixed everything around and I'm just going to incorporate all of this so that it kind of becomes one solidified um, conglomeration that's probably not the right word <laughs> but I'm going to let that sit so that the egg cooks at the bottom I put the lid up on the top so that it could cook a little bit on the top as well and so you don't lose too much of the moisture taking my spatula now and just loosening everything up I am going to flip the whole thing that's the next step once the bottom half is pretty much cooked And here's a failed attempt at me being fancy. Oh, fail. Yeah, my arm, my elbow really, really hurts. So, and the, <laughs> this omelet is very heavy. So I take the spatula and uh, just kind of flip it open, back open again. And then I'm going to do it the 
the Spanish way, quote unquote, as they would do with a Spanish tortilla. So I'm taking a plate here. If you have like a flatter surface to flip onto, it makes it a little bit easier, like a, maybe a sheet pan or something. I'm just taking a plate that's a little bit larger than the fry pan, and I'm just flipping it over, and then I'm going to return it back to the pan to cook the other side. there you go first meal of the week served with a side of sliced tomatoes sourdough bread with butter and a nice memory from growing up starting off the second meal by making the side which is going to be a crock pot mac and cheese I've never done it in the crock pot before and it actually turned out really really well um, you can see my elbows still hurting me here but I'm just dumping in the cooked macaroni so that was eight ounces of dry macaroni that I had cooked and it, it has expanded and I'm putting it in the crock pot with some olive oil some pepper here and then some salt links to recipes will be down below and here's a real fun fail. Oops, yeah, that was onion powder <laughs> all over the floor. But I'm putting that in here. This is an optional ingredient that the recipe called for, and it does, I think, enhance it, so I would add. I added about one and a half teaspoons or tablespoons um, than what was called for in the recipe. And then I'm taking the milk here, gently just dumping it in. This is some whole milk that I got on clearance for 75 cents amazing so check out check out your grocery stores for all the bargains do not shy away a lot of these things are not quote-unquote expired um, but they're just approaching the best buy or best sell by date so we've got some butter here that should have been melted but I thought I'd just dump it in whole and then here is the processed cheese the Velveeta if you will um, I did not use Velveeta I just picked up what they had at Aldi this was a seasonal find the uh, queso blanco that I'm showing you here and it worked just fine so just uh, some kind of cheese and then we have uh, some shredded cheddar uh, finishing off that pack and then opening up a new one and I think that's pretty much it let's find out and all we need to do now is just stir everything as much as we can at this point and then stick the lid on cook on low for a couple hours two to three hours stirring every so often and that is pretty much the mac and cheese done so this is the first part of me stirring everything together um, it does take a bit so two to three hours but you can see everything is gonna get nice and creamy I'm gonna give it a little taste here to make sure I don't need to add any more pepper um, or salt, um, but you can see I'm adding just a teensy bit of Dijon mustard. This is one of those ingredients from that copycat mac and cheese recipe that I posted. I'll have that linked up above or down below. Uh, I thought it needed just a hint of that, so I went ahead and did that, and that's pretty much done. Now I'm moving on to the chicken. I am just basically going to roast up or fry up some chicken here, uh, chicken thighs. I'm salting and peppering them in the background here. And then I'm just gonna add that to the hot skillet to cook the bottom. Once the seasoned side is down, I'm gonna go ahead and put salt and pepper on the top of that. And then I'm gonna let that cook about halfway, more or less halfway to like three quarters of the way done on the stove top. Um, and then I'm going to finish cooking in the oven on a low broil until it gets nice and cooked through. Obviously there's some bone in here. This is bone in. Uh, and then the skin is nice and brown and crispy. And I forgot to turn off the burner here, so make sure you do that first, just in case. 
don't want any kitchen fires. So here we go, I'm pulling this out here. This was in the oven under a low broil, as I mentioned. You can see the chicken is nice and brown and crispy and now cooked through. And that was our yummy meal for the evening. There's that chicken, nice and brown, served with that creamy, creamy crock pot mac and cheese, a side of green beans with a squirt of a lemon to brighten everything up. Very, very yummy. This next meal was probably my favorite. It is a take on kind of like a Carl's Jr. Western bacon cheeseburger, or um, I think the recipe that I linked down below calls it a cowboy burger. Um, it's basically a burger, but you add fried onions. So I am prepping the onions now. I took a, my onion was really, really big, so I'm only using half of it, uh, but you gauge however much onion you want and I'm just slicing the slicing the onion really really as thinly as possible um, and then I'm going to coat it in a coating that you will see in just a bit So here's that coating. I'm kind of going to do it like shake and bake style in a Ziploc bag. So we've got some flour here. Very simple seasonings. Um, the recipe again will be down below. And then we've got some salt and pepper. And then I decided to add some paprika, uh, sweet paprika to mine. I just like the color and I do like the flavor of the paprika as well. So I'm just going to put maybe about a teaspoon or so of that in here. I'm going to further prep the onions by kind of soaking them in milk as you would normally do a bit of like an egg wash before coating something in a flour mixture. So I'm just taking some milk here and I'm just making sure that it's fully um, immersed in the milk and then I'm going to shake off as much of that moisture as possible before putting it into the flour mixture that I had set aside. So here we go. I'm just putting that all in there. In hindsight, I think maybe I might have done this in two smaller batches. The flour got a bit gluey or gummy in there, I think, because of that mixture, that, excuse me, the milk. So I think I would maybe shake this up in a couple batches next time. But in any case, I'm doing this here, shaking it up so that everything's fully coated. And then after taking a bit of a peek, I noticed that it's not fully, fully coated and I probably didn't use enough of that flour mixture. So I made up a second smaller batch here and then just dumped that in here to supplement what I had made before. And then I'm going to finish shaking that up and you can see what it looks like in just a second. There you go, a lot more thoroughly coated. So that is going to go into the heated oil. As you can see here, this is just canola oil that I had heated up to temperature. So it's ready to fry the onions. After some minutes of frying up it becomes this nice golden brown and then I'm going to remove it from the oil set it aside on a cooling rack with some paper towel to soak up the excess oil and then I'm going to finish doing that with the rest of the onions
there you go nice and golden brown um, not entirely crispy there are some bits that are crispier than the others but oh gosh these fried onions are like one of my favorite things fried onions and onion rings so so good can't wait to eat this and then once that is all done these are our meals this is Collins he just had a plain old cheeseburger with some french fries he didn't want onions and then Rob and I had this clearance salad I picked up along with our burgers I did mine low carb style this particular evening um, so I have some um, bacon on there on that cheddar cheese I had also put some blue cheese and we've got some sugar-free uh, barbecue sauce and there are those onions so I didn't have a bun but I have all the other lovely carbs to go along with this and all of those flavors from that uh, bacon Western bacon cheeseburger from Carl's jr. Um, and then I served with a little bit of blue cheese on top of that so that is my plate And here is Rob's burger finishing off in the frying pan. There's that blue cheese on top of the cheddar cheese. Oh, so, so delicious. <laughs> Added everything basically that I had on mine. His is on a brioche bun, um, extra blue cheese crumbles because he just loves the blue cheese. And there's that side salad and it's such a delicious dinner, guys. Give this one a try. And last up before Valentine's Day, I made a lemon piccata a chicken lemon piccata lemon chicken piccata piccata chicken <laughs> so i'm starting off with lemon from our yard it smells so good all those oils as i was rolling it out so that we could get some juice here i'm just going to juice half of the lemon set that aside and then i'm going to slice the rest this is um I guess really more of an aesthetic thing so this is just for garnish towards the end but I'm gonna slice that and then set that aside I'm now taking some chicken thighs. These are boneless, skinless that I had defrosted. The recipe calls for chicken breast, I believe, so check the link down below if you want to follow it to a T. But I'm taking that chicken thighs that I defrosted and putting some salt and pepper, seasoning one side, and then seasoning the second. I've got like a system where I've got like my left hand is touching the raw chicken, the right hand is not touching the raw chicken and handling the spices and everything. So don't worry, there is no cross con contamination going on here. If you're a new cook, make sure you don't, um, you don't do that. So I am, rather than taking the chicken and then um, coating, dredging it in flour in a separate bowl, I just de decided to do it on top of the cutting board. Um, and then I am just gonna make sure it's coated more or less on both sides. I'm gonna do that for the rest of the chicken, so salt and pepper and then flour. You can see I set the spoon down on the cutting board with the raw chicken, so I decided to do it away with the spoon and just use my, um, my quote unquote <laughs> clean hand to add some more flour to each of the chicken, um, chicken thighs, but here you go just finishing this up and then setting that aside to fry. Seeing as this was Valentine's Day, I'm being very indulgent here with some butter and the oil that I'm using. I'm using olive oil. I think the recipe says canola, but you just use whatever you feel is right. Um, once that's heated up, I am going to add the chicken thighs to the butter and uh, oil a mixture and then I'm going to cook that through on one side do a flip cook that thoroughly uh, because this is not going to get any further cooking in the oven so you want to make sure your chicken is fully cooked
after I add the new pieces of chicken, I decide to add a little bit more oil and butter. Again, very decadent, special night though. So um, it, it really, really added to the flavor and I just didn't want it to burn in the pan. So um, right now I'm doing a bit of a switcheroo with the burners since we only have two burners that work. Uh, I wanted to boil the pasta in the one with a larger flame. And on the back burner, I am finishing off this sauce or making the sauce, the lemon piccata sauce for the chicken. So that was chicken bouillon with water, the lemon juice that I had squeezed from earlier. I'm deglazing the bottom of the pan and scraping up the brown bits. And then I'm going to add the rest of the ingredients. So those are the sliced lemons. Let that simmer for a teeny tiny bit and then I'm going to stir it up and then add some flour. So I decided I wanted a, a teeny bit thicker. Um, I didn't want it to just reduce down to nothing and not have any sauce so I just added a bit of flour. You can do like a flour slurry before adding that in but I only added maybe a teaspoon, half a teaspoon, something like that. And then once that is done, I put the butter in that the recipe calls for. Stir that around until completely melted through. And that's going to give it a nice sheen, a nice gloss. You can see as I stir it, it has thickened just a teeny tiny bit. It's not like a creamy kind of sauce, but it has some body to it now. I'm going to give it a taste to see if I need to add anything. And then I'm going to add the capers. Stir that a bit. Give it another taste. And then I decided it needed just a little bit more lemon. So that's probably maybe a third of a lemon <laughs> that I squeezed in there. And that is the finished dinner. I sliced up the chicken, served it with these heart-shaped little pasta things from Aldi, some roasted uh, zucchini, and it was just so good. Really, even though there's a lot of butter, it's quote-unquote light. It wasn't a creamy sauce, um, and I had tossed a bit of that sauce in the pasta as well, so that's nice and flavored, in addition to be cooked being cooked in some salted, nice salted water. So I hope you enjoyed our meals for the week. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you stopping by, and I will see you in the next video. Take care until then. Thank you.